with a 3 inch blade and 7 inches overall, the new S7 by Michael Zeba might just be the perfect tiny little pocket companion. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today we're going to celebrate the man with the bird face once again, Mr. Michael Zeba. And now we're looking at the S7. And something I just recently found out from Mike, I had a chance to see him again in Las Vegas about two weeks ago. We were set up, uh, our tables were actually next to one another. So we got to hang out for the entire show and have a little bit of fun. And one of the things that I found out is that the whole S series, the numerals that follow the S, are all degrees of difficulty in which the knife is actually made. So if you go back to like the old S2, uh, not counting my particular version here, but the more plain S2 with no inlays, was easier to achieve manufacturing than the S5, which I have here in my hand. So the S5 is a higher level and more difficult to make than the S2 and you can see you know a lot of the little details like the skull and the back spacers and uh, all the uh, the gallery of skulls that are inlaid inside of the frame that was a more difficult knife to make and the S7 would now be a little bit more difficult than all the others and that's actually quite interesting when you think about it because this is not a very large knife so you'd be thinking well it's got to be easier right Actually, the smaller you make anything, the more difficult it's going to be. And that's uh, kind of a weird thing, but that goes down to, to anything, no matter what you're making. The smaller you make something, the more challenging it becomes, the harder it is to work with, the slower and easier you have to do the work to work with it. And uh, any mistakes that pop up will happen more quickly and become much more noticeable. Now, with this particular version, as I mentioned in the intro, you've got a 3-inch blade, and it's about 7 inches overall, including the lanyard opening backspacer. Now, there are a few variations of this, and there's even one where the backspacer has a gallery of skull inlays, much like the backspacer here. So that's obviously going to be a little bit more money than the standard version. But the reason why I really fell in love with this particular knife, and, and those of you that have watched my channel for any length of time know that I generally don't go below a 3.5 inch blade length. There are a couple of knives that I own in a 3 inch or 3 and a quarter, and they're rarely carried. It's more for those days where... I need something smaller and lighter. It's a hot day here in Texas, and you're just wearing lightweight shorts, and you don't want anything big and bulky flapping around in there. Well, I broke my own rule once again because I fell in love with the marbled carbon fiber, the gorgeous grinds that are on this blade, the beautiful finish work on the blade, just the whole package. A miniaturized Zeba for me, was uh, something that I, I hadn't really experimented with before. There have been S5 minis, there have been S3 minis and S2 minis, as far as I recall, but I've never gotten any because they didn't particularly appeal to me. But there was something about this one that I went, oh, yeah. And going back to the materials, part of it is this gorgeous marbled carbon fiber. Now, I have owned a lot of knives with marbled carbon fiber, but most of those are older knives that go back to the original black site carbon fiber days, where black site was manufacturing marble carbon fiber. It was beautiful. It had a lot of radiance to it and very few voids. Fast forward a couple of years, black site is out of business. They're no longer making carbon fiber. And because of the void that was left there, no pun intended, a lot of companies tried to replicate the look of marble carbon fiber, and they did a pretty good job. However, there were so many pinprick voids and even larger, more cavernous voids throughout the material that it got to be frustrating for knife makers to deal with because basically you have to, when you're sanding it, you're grinding it, and you're working with it, you have to keep a pile of the carbon fiber dust to the side, and then when you're finishing the knife off, you're going to fill in all those little pinpricks and voids with super glue 
and the carbon fiber powder and then you're going to go ahead and finish the, the, the material off and give it its final finishing and hope it's going to blend together well and in most cases it does but it provides the, the, the knife maker with uh, less time to spend with his family or doing other things instead they're sitting there with super glue and powder and filling in all those micro voids so it got to be a pain in the ass for makers and a lot of makers were letting stuff slip through whether they let it slip through or they just didn't see it because sometimes we just miss stuff you know the lighting in the shop isn't you know as great as it is like right here and maybe they just didn't see a couple of the voids and they missed them and you've seen them pop up in reviewers videos you've seen them pop up in your own collection as you've bought knives it does happen so a lot of makers just said screw it we're never dealing with marble carbon fiber again but now along comes Matt Diskin yes the knife maker who is manufacturing his own line of carbon fiber including this absolutely incredible marbled carbon fiber and since Matt and Mike are friends Mike says you know what just give me sheet after sheet after sheet and he started making quite a few knives with that material and I gotta tell you it looks fantastic on top of that, the action is, as always, with every Ziba, dead on, perfect, great, nice, firm detent, smooth action, just everything that you'd want out of a flipper. Now, let's take a look really quickly at the packaging, because Mike does use a, a few different variations of packaging for different knives. Sometimes you get a hard Pelican-style box, sometimes you get a pouch, it just depends on the model. This is his standard zippered pouch packaging uh, with the uh, silver foil Zeba logo and uh, bird face logo there and inside you got the nice red velvet or velvet like stuff here is his card which it's better if it's not upside down uh, he is a proud member of the knife makers guild and make sure you come out to see us by the way uh, we're doing the next guild show in Dallas Texas actually Fort Worth Texas at the end of March it's gonna be really cool Mike's gonna be there he's gonna have a whole bunch of his knives as always so uh, uh, definitely make the plans it's called the ICCE show and you can google that or you can just visit my Instagram and you'll see links to it and then here is your certificate of authenticity there you get the, the hologram sticker to prove the authenticity Mike's signature and then here it is the S7 it is Nitro V for the steel Nitro V for those that don't know uh, is made exclusively by New Jersey Steel Baron it's the only place it can be purchased as the raw bar material and uh, what Aldo set out to do with that was make a uh, basically AEBL on steroids so it's got all the great properties of AEBL but it's uh, upped a little bit on the corrosion resistance and the wear resistance on the edge so it's an absolutely fantastic steel and one of the biggest benefits and why Mike likes to use it is it takes an absolute true razor edge it can be taken down very 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 thin without uh, compromising the integrity of the edge uh, it is marked that is titanium and carbon fiber with a vintage bronze finish on the titanium and it was uh, made uh, January 24th, 2019. It is a fresh build. And then you get the soft red microfiber cloth. So why do I in particular like this knife? Well, again, it's hard for me because I do prefer the larger knives. Again, going to the S2. Let's give you an open comparison. You see it is significantly smaller than the S2. And way smaller than the S5 it's even smaller than the bold the bold is not an enormous model it's actually meant to be a very slim uh, fairly easy carry knife but you, but you see there is a significant difference there uh, of a little more than an inch overall so it is a, a smaller knife which I typically do not purchase however once I saw this I went I have to have one of these and you know what's funny even though it's only a three finger hold it feels really really good now I'm not gonna go out and do any kind of major hardcore cutting tasks with this because you, you just don't have the grip for that but the frame is very nicely contoured swelled out in the middle so it does fill the hand nicely for its size 
you've got the jipping up here on the spine of the blade you've also got a pretty deep recess here it's not just a harpoon but he's actually done a recess here for the thumb to fit into so you can actually just drop your thumb in there for a more precise cutting and more detailed cutting you can certainly choke up on the blade and do that now there is no finger choil here to allow you to, to kind of really get a choked up grip you will slice yourself so you're gonna have to keep your finger behind the flipper tab but again it's a small knife this is not a large reach I mean here's my thumb extended if you will and it goes beyond all the way up into the harpoon so that's certainly not a far reach at all I can actually keep my thumb uh, bent a little bit to get up there into it I loved it for the overall feeling I'm not much for antique finishes either so funny enough here I am with another knife that doesn't seem like it's gonna fit and, and, and go right up my alley but it does I like the look on this particular knife because there's still some beautiful refined areas the uh, the nice satin finish on the flat portions of the uh, hidden hardware clip yep that is blind screwed and that nicely done you bet you didn't notice that at first very nicely done so you've got a high luster finish there the titanium going around the outer edges is a nice polish with the green anodizing so you've got a little bit of uh, old school antique look and a little bit of polished refined areas it's a really nice juxtaposition as you flip the knife from one side to the other also the same thing can really be said of the blade because you've got this stone wash finish actually bead blasted and stone wash finish on the primary bevel the tip bevel and the swedge and then the flats are done in a uh, pretty high finish satin so there's a nice two-tone look there as well it is marked nitro V you do have a sharpening choil some people find that to be extremely important so there it is there is your sharpening notch uh, it does have the lock bar over travel built in so you can't overextend and bend the titanium lock bar accordion style lock bar cutout for tension blade seats very nicely perfectly centered and nestled deep into the uh, the body of the knife I also like this so you've got you know you've got your choils here for your fingers which obviously is gonna make it very comfortable to hold in the hand but I like the aesthetics of it when it's closed so you see just the the tip of that harpoon where it meets that recess for the thumb coming right out of the deepest part of the valley here I like that I think it's a really cool look overall as you see it is lightning fast really really fast flipper fantastic detent and when you're buying these remember you're not really always able to order off of Mike's website directly he does list available knives on his website but they're not often available so when you're searching for this you're gonna end up at Ford Henry custom knives Ford Henry is one of the I believe two largest dealers of Ziba knives you've got DLT trading and you've got Ford Henry custom knives are the biggest and he obviously does distribute to a lot of different dealers however Ford Henry Vince always gets to pick the cream of the crop he gets more of the special editions he gets more of the rarer stuff the prototypes the one-offs and things like that so whenever you're looking for a Ziba always go to Ford Henry knives uh, Ford Henry custom knives and you're gonna find something there you know generally he does his uploads on Friday but keep in mind if you're looking and you see like an older Ziba that maybe you missed by a week or a couple of days and you're in love with it contact Vince because not everything Vince has is always up on the website at all times so you can call Vince and go hey I saw this s7 with the marble carbon fiber and I wanted to know if you were going to be expecting any more if you have any more and you know what he may actually already have one ready to ship or he knows that he has another order coming in at a specified time from Mike so always reach out and that really goes for any of the of the good dealers that are out there if you really really want something and it's them you want to give the business to man send them a message even if it's not on their website they may have some coming or may have some that they haven't uploaded yet so always keep that in mind but Vince is a good partner of uh, Mike's and he gets really the cream of the crop stuff 
I'm going to be showing uh, on my Instagram in a couple of days here some of the really awesome beads that Mike made. Uh, he, he gave me a handful of those. Some of the new uh, sick pig beads, beads and stuff like that. He's got some that are in uh, gimp leather zippered masks and gas masks and all kinds of just crazy, crazy shit. So uh, Mike's always trying to think of new and exciting things to do, even outside of just doing the knives. Yes, he is rather preoccupied with doing kitchen knives. That's a huge business for him. If you're looking for a great chef's knife, uh, I really can't suggest anyone any higher than Zeba. I have two myself, and they get a ton of use, and I still love them. But I still like to collect, mainly, his tactical style flippers. And he's always got something unique in his design and something unique in his finishes. Now, while this one, you know, was a, was a collaboration he did with someone else uh, to do that finish, which I explained in that video, you look at stuff like this. This black, I think it's, uh, I think he calls it black nickel, um, blanking on it right now, with actual real rose gold. Nobody does that kind of stuff in knives. You know, he's doing finish work that comes directly out of the jewelry world and brings it into knives. This unique method of anodizing the titanium that he did on this looks fantastic. This stuff, you know, these, these sculpted skulls, I mean, this is crazy, crazy work, guys. And nobody is doing this stuff except for Mike. I mean, literally nobody is doing stuff like this. So whether you're looking for a fairly budget-friendly EDC, he certainly makes some that will fit that bill, or you're looking for higher-end stuff, there's something for everybody in what he makes. And this one is going to be great for those that live in restrictive states that say you can't carry over a 3-inch folder and this and this and that. You know, you've got a nice small 3-inch blade, 7 inches overall, slim, very, very lightweight and easy to carry. And even for somebody like me, I've got uh, size large hands, uh, or a size large glove. I can, I still don't feel like I'm overreaching on this thing where I can't manipulate it. It's simple, it's easy, it's fast, great action, positive lockup. There's the lockup for you right there. I know I tend to forget to show that sometimes because I don't, I don't really collect knives that are garbage so I don't really have to worry about lockup and blade centering and all that that's an automatic given at the level of knives that I get but I do read the comments and I see that you guys do ask about that from time to time so yeah there it is there's the lockup and I think I showed the blade centering before but I'll show it again there you go. All right, so that's pretty much it for this. Again, Fort Henry Custom Knives is going to be your source for these. Grab them while they're there because everything that Mike does is limited in nature. Whether he's only going to make one of something, five of something, 20 of something, or even 50 of something, they're always limited. And as we see, they always sell out really, really fast. I'm just now getting to this. Uh, I'm two weeks out from the Vegas show, so I don't know how many may be left in the system out there, but try it. Grab it if you can, and I promise you, you're absolutely going to fall in love with it.